The rose window is really intended to be a device to kind of focus your attention in the room. The circle kind of does catch your gaze and uh, kind of hold it somehow. And it also does the same thing from the outside. So when you're like say driving on Aurora or even in a seaplane coming in, you, you see the, the rose window and you focus your eye on that circle and it really does gather the attention of the community both in a more intimate way on the inside of the building but in a, in a sort of a community-wide way from the exterior. Jim got the commission to design the renovation of the St. Mark's interior. Uh, Jim was asked to consider, well, what, what more could we do now? It was in the 90s, I think, and of course, he was chosen because he's a modernist and not a <laughs> Gothic architect. Um, and so his proposal was to celebrate the stark, um, simple geometry of the space. So this was the first uh, rendering that we showed to the design committee. And, you know, I was all excited about it and talked about how the sun would come in and hit uh, the, the font at just a certain time of year and all. And they all liked it. They even clapped when we were finished. But then the next day I got a call saying, it's just a little too pagan for us. So there was, there was a, a desire for a focus to the, to the room a major big focus, but there was a sun problem. And so that's where I come in, which is, okay, I, I'm, I'm happy to help uh, address issues like this. On the one hand, give us something that's powerful and meaningful, and on the other hand, help control this technical problem. Um, and so I had worked with Jim before and we had had a wonderful relationship and he brings a wonderful, wonderfully intuitive, sensitive sensibility to these kinds of things. Uh, this wall, while we're uh, playing with the light and trying to soften the light from the western setting sun, we could also take that light and try to create a, a, a sense of uh, transcendence. Eventually, in studying it in section and in models, I, be I, I came to understand that if we move the, the, the focal point that we were going to create inboard, and not put it in the west wall, but put it further inward, we'd gain two things. One is we wouldn't exacerbate the light brightness problem, and we'd gain a chapel. And we'd be able to work in scale with this enormous room, because now we're inside. We can, we, we can make this thing as big as we want. And he, really did create the, this, the uh, glass piece that is the window. We, we did a uh, fairly large scale model. It was maybe three or four feet tall. It was a big physical model that I made here in my studio and, um, and very precise. And so it was relatively easy to get your head down in the door and you know, see what you would see coming in. There are four different kinds of glass used in the St. Mark's installation. This piece is an inch thick, so it's, it's a really serious piece of glass, and it's got a lot of texture on, on this one side of it, made by Doug Hansen in Seattle. And then we, we, we realized that it would be so nice to be able to open the bottom portion of it. The opening and closing of the doors was a brilliant uh, understanding of Jim Olson's, that that was an opportunity. Uh, I hadn't originally understood that we could even make doors that big or, the, or the, the, that we would, might want to open up the center of the screen that way and, and Jim intuited that and worked with the engineers to get it to happen and I, I love the fact that um, it has actually influenced uh, their ability to uh, program their services. Each uh, project for me is like a kind of a master's class in whatever it is that, that the project's about, because you have to, you know, really try to understand it. And it's, it. That's why I love doing this. How do you do something that is impressive and memorable and powerful, but that's still humble? It's most successful if it can be entered first through the heart, then through the eyes, and finally through the mind.